This is Vern Venom Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Who are you? Where did you come from? Where are you going? And why on earth are you here on earth? Haven't you always wondered and haven't you wanted to know? And isn't it time you found out? The God of this universe has a purpose for this universe and a wonderful will and a wisdom for the living of your life if you will seek it. But the choice to seek it is yours. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. You are a son or daughter of the living God. Believe it or not. Only why not believe it? A spark of spirit. A fragment of infinity. A burning ember of eternity lies smoldering in your soul. The kingdom of God is within you. You are infinitely loved by this infinite God. Know it or not. Only now you know it. You are loved by the God who is the source of all infinity, who is the architect of time and space. And until man finds God, he begins at no beginning and works to no end. Said Socrates, the ancient Greek philosopher, the unexamined life is not worth living. It is not enough just to find out about God. You yearn to find God personally and experientially. It is not enough just to know about God. There is a longing to know God. But God will not inflict nor impose his purposes upon you as an individual. God will not batter from its hinges the door of human will. You must choose to walk this path freely, gladly, delightedly. Jesus of Nazareth declared the first commandment of all the commandments is this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. You are infinitely loved, infinitely loved. In God we live and move and have our very being, and God in us likewise lives and moves and has his very being, declared the Master, the kingdom of God is within you. There is an ultimate purpose prevailing in this universe. God has a plan for this planet and a will for human life. And if you will seek it, you will find it. You have a rendezvous with eternity, a divine destiny beyond the sparkling stars of space. If only you will have it so to be. Man is a son of the eternal, yearning eternity, a child of the infinite, longing infinity, a son of the living God of all this universe. And God is nearer to you than heartbeat and breathing and the very pulse at your wrist. The kingdom of God is within you. Eternal life begins for you not when you die, but the day you begin to live, truly to live by these eternal values, by truth and beauty and goodness, and living in love for all. There is a religion about Jesus, consisting essentially of theories and theologies, creeds and catechisms, doctrines and dogmas about what this Jesus of Nazareth taught. And contrasted to that, there is a religion of Jesus, which is the simple loving of God and loving of other human beings, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. And what mankind has heard during most of human history has been this altered religion about Jesus rather than the vital, life-transforming truths he came proclaiming. You are challenged to give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place who created you originally, who is the source of all creation. Be true to the best you know, to truth and beauty and goodness. Man was created by God and for God, and nothing but God can satiate that thirsting of spirit which burns like salt in the soul. If you could ever, if only for one splintered instant, if you could ever know really what it feels like, to be infinitely loved by this infinite God. If you could experience that but once, you would never again be content with anything less for your life, anything less than that transcendent, joyous, bounteous, overwhelming spiritual experience of knowing your own value, that you have a place in this universe as surely as the sun and the moon and the stars, that you belong here. You are a child of God and every other human being who walks this planet Earth is a child of God as well. A brother or a sister that literally, truly, spiritually, this planet is one family of God. The supreme adventure of mortal life is then to begin to live as the son or daughter of God you were born to be. Begin by faith to live. As the child of God, 
you can become? No, as the child of God, you are. To do the will of God is then to align and synchronize your life with the plans and purposes of God for you. God knows you better than you know yourself. God loves you better than you could love yourself. Jesus taught an uncompromising allegiance to God, an unquenchable loyalty to goodness. Let nothing stand between you and God. You are not a cosmic orphan. You are a child of the Most High. This is a friendly universe. And by faith, you can discover who and what and why you really are. To live selfishly is to live restlessly. There exists within you, there pulses and surges within you, a divine dissatisfaction with anything less than the divine. But this universe is not a blind and reeling accident. There is a plan for this planet and a purpose for your life. The universe is not just a happy happenstance, the ultimate reality, not a roulette wheel. Life is not merely a biological bingo game and your number happened to come up and that's why you're here, but with no further purpose. God is not an omnipotent ogre, a distant something or other in never, never land, a mere heavenly hypothesis, a theological theory, an abstract abstrusity, or a vague oblong blur beyond the Big Dipper. God is personally a father. Jesus said God is spirit. 152 times in the New Testament of the Bible referring to God, he described God as father, not only as his father, but addressing multitudes of people referred to God as your father. God is the source of personality. And God himself is personal, far more than personal, but God is personal and can be known and experienced personally. God can know and be known, love and be loved. And again, I reiterate, the most important experience is that God loves you. God loves you with an almost blinding affection. You are a wholly unique person, just as science has discovered that no two snowflakes are identical, neither are any two personalities. No one else has your fingerprints, no one else has your voice print. You are utterly irreplaceable in this universe, entirely induplicable. There is only one of you in all this cosmos, and you are the one, an infinitely valuable being. God knows you perfectly. God knows every hair on your head, every filling in your teeth, every freckle on the back of your neck, every corn or hangnail on your toes. And knowing you this incredibly, God knows also as well how to love you incredibly as no other personality on earth could conceivably begin to love you. There is dawning upon this planet a spiritual renaissance of people who are becoming aware of this. To be part of it is to dare to dream the dream that one day the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and the world shall not learn the ways of war anymore. It is to dare to dream the dream of peace on earth and goodwill among men. And never can there come peace on this earth until and unless we learn goodwill among men. The spiritual renaissance begins with the individual daring to live as the child of God and brother to man, he was born and created to be in one family of God. God has made man for himself, and the heart of man is restless until it finds its rest in God. And in this process of finding and knowing God, there is peace like a river and joy like a running stream. The most famous historian of the 20th century, Professor Arnold Toynbee of England, wrote in volume 12 of his monumental history of the world that most urgently modern civilization needs to return to religion, not merely to institutions and dogmas, but to spiritual values, he wrote. That is the spiritual renaissance. One enters it by faith, and faith is assuming the truth, then acting on that assumption, assuming this truth, that it is a friendly universe, that you are loved by God, that the brotherhood of man is real, and then acting upon that assumption. People have traditionally two basic reactions to religion. Either it scares them to death or it bores them to sleep. What this Galilean taught neither scares people to death nor bores them to sleep. It brings them to life. Human beings were created to love people and use things. Historically, humankind has had it backward, reversed, and has loved things and used people. Anthropologists say the three basic needs of human beings are for food, shelter, and clothing. But is that really all? Is that enough? Ultimately, 
Man cannot live by bread alone. Imagine a social and political utopia on this earth. No pollution, jobs for everyone, plenty of food, vast leisure time. And yet you could put modern man into that political utopia, transplant contemporary society into an ideal social situation, but if people still hated each other because of their skin colors and because of their accents, they would begin tearing down that utopia, that perfect society within a month, within a week, within a day, because the problem lies essentially in the attitudes of human beings inside themselves. The way we think and feel and act and react toward one another, toward ourselves, toward the universe, toward God. Think, just imagine for a moment, the difference it would make in your own life the way you are to know that you are infinitely valuable, that you haven't a mere pittance of worth in this universe, but incredible worth. Think how you would walk down the street, how you would do everything you do, how you'd work, converse, how your life, your existence, your experience would be if you knew experientially that you were a son or daughter of this living God. That could change your life. That would make all things new. And the incredible thing is that it's true. Assimilate that. Claim that. Appropriate that. Make that your own the very basis of your philosophy of life and the very basis of your life itself as you live it, as you are. And there is such happiness in this. Happiness is too paltry a word to describe this experience. The religion which Jesus of Nazareth taught and proclaimed in his philosophy is joyful. In Jesus' most famous sermon the Sermon on the Mount, the very first word in that is blessed or happy. And the first nine sentences, one after another after another in that Sermon on the Mount, each one of those begins with that same word, blessed or happy. You were created for that. All humanity was created for that. The sense of wonder, joy, love and awe, the vast mystery and yet the great and incredible experience of finding the kingdom of God is within you that spiritual things are real, indeed the most real experiences accessible to human beings. And to enter into that faith, to claim that, to know that, to live that, is to be part of the spiritual renaissance which one day shall transform this earth. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation. Nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.